guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter, where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. Without ado, let's get into the show. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. I've always been on a quest for discovering the quality of life, what is freedom, and dissected it down to four components, time, financial, location, and health freedom. And so once I figured out the secret code, I went on a mission to interview those people that had that were embodying those traits, all of them. And so today I'm happy to welcome Sejo uh, Lakani. She's the CEO of TechWorks and CloudWorks, uh, talking all about cybersecurity. I'm always been fascinated with tech. Um, so she's going to talk to us about entrepreneurship, women empowerment, uh, and cybersecurity. So with that, uh, we'll welcome uh, St. Joe to the show. Welcome. Thank you so much, Chris. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I know we had connected through Podmatch, which is like the Airbnb for podcast guests and hosts. Yeah. And so tell us more about you know your journey, how you got started, and we'll go from there. Sure. Um, again, thank you so much for having me. Uh, so my journey actually starts completely different, um, as probably most people's. But I started out in the financial industry. Prior to that, I was in the entertainment industry. So I worked for companies like USA Cable, BMG. Then all of a sudden, one day, I landed at a bank, didn't know anything about <laughs> banking. And my manager at the time, my boss, was this amazing kick-ass woman who was a year younger than me, who was just a rock star. And through her, I ended up on the trading floor and then throughout multiple multinational banks living all over the world. I've lived in London, Hong Kong, Singapore really Tokyo, just amazing places, amazing experiences. And I was climbing that corporate ladder. And I worked at Merrill Lynch, then Deutsche Bank, then Morgan Stanley. <laughs> when I got to Morgan Stanley, I'm still, you know, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be MD and I'm going to do this. And all these, you know, all these things that you think about, right? When you're, when you're working, how you have to just climb, climb, climb. And by that time I was married, uh, got married in 2005, I had my first child in 2008. And I had a second boy in 2011. So I've got two kids and I'm traveling one week a month to London and to all these places. And I'm like, what am I doing? You know, we just built this beautiful new house and I left. I quit one day. Didn't tell my husband. <laughs> we just moved into our house in September. It was November. And we had two boys under the age of three. And I was like, you know what? I'm I'm done. I'm just, I'm, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to be home and do yoga and play tennis and <laughs> eat at Nordstrom's every afternoon and just kind of, you know, be that person. And I got on the train. I got on the train to come home and I called my husband. I'm like, you know, hey, what's going on? He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm on my way home. And he's like, oh, everything okay? I'm like, well, I just quit. He's like, quit what? I'm like, my job. <laughs> what job? You might get back there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and that's really where my journey kind of restarted. It was my reset button. I ended up being home for about three months. Uh, my husband had started a company in 2008 in the heart of the recession. My husband thought it was great to leave his job and start a company. And so uh, he started a company in 2008, an IT company. And, you know, I was home for about three months and he goes, listen, you're driving the kids crazy. You're driving me crazy. I was driving everything. I was driving myself crazy. And he's like, why don't you just kind of do a little work with me? Do a little project management work. Um, and that started in about 2013. Two years later, I took over as CEO of TechWorks and started managing operations, sales, and marketing. And, uh, you know, started there. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting because... <laughs> um... Yeah, what a fascinating, uh, that's, uh, it reminds me of my, my own journey. I just, after, uh, I think it was a couple of days after Lehman, I I couldn't take anymore. I couldn't stand seeing like CEOs just rob the general public. And um, 
And yeah. so I, like, I was like, I don't want to be a part of this. So I, I turned in my keys and I, <laughs> I did what you did. But um, it's, uh, yeah, like looking back, those <laughs> those were the days. But um, those were, yeah, it's liberating <laughs> though. You know, you all of a sudden I'm sitting there going, now what? You know, now what do I do? I've got to have some purpose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, I always wanted on my epigraph, you know, quit his lucrative, high paying. I uh, always wanted that. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. Although my husband, I got to tell you, we just bought our dream home. We built our dream home. And he was, <laughs> he's like, that wasn't part of the plan. I go, oh, I have a plan. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Oh, it was really good. Yeah. yeah so that's where my like IT that. journey began. That's I, I've never done IT before. So I sort of ran the company and he ran everything finance and technical. And uh, we grew the company to be one of the top, you know, 100 companies in the nation. Yeah. And it's interesting because cybersecurity now, now, now all of warfare has moved online. It's like, yes. you know, it's hacking. It's like identity yeah. theft. People trying to get into your iPhone now. It's like, um. so what are some of the big, concerns facing business today from a cybersecurity standpoint? Yeah, you know, um, the concerns a lot of people say, well, are the concerns different by vertical? Like, does healthcare have something specific? Does manufacturing have something specific? And I'll tell you what it really is. Our biggest concern is our people. Our people are not trained. We do not spend enough money training our employees and keeping our data safe. And we do that. And now, understand that I come from a small and medium business aspect. My clientele is all small and medium businesses. So I'm not really looking at the Fortune 100, the Fortune 500. I'm looking at these little companies that are like, it's not going to happen to me. I'm never, it, I'm, you know, the problem is it is happening to you. You just don't know it. You know, um, our biggest concerns are keeping the data safe. Right now, you know, when we think about hacking, we think about like this nerdy school kid in their mother's basement, smelling, that's like hack, you know, typing away on these big computers, trying to like break into the world. And it's not like that. That's not what hacking is anymore. You know, hacking is these smart, brilliant people all over the world, dropping little droplets and waiting for you to just pick up that crumb and create the hacking yourself. They're not breaking in. We're giving them the key. We're opening the door. We're telling them to come in. We're showing them where everything is and then say, have a great day on your way out. And that's and that's what people aren't understanding. I think people are really having a hard time sort of getting to that, oh, shoot, we're responsible for this, you know? We're not doing enough to keep our data safe, our people safe. I, and I, Yeah, it's always, you know, it's always the... Um... You know, now there's backdoor channels. So now if hackers can't get through you, they'll get through other doors like they can, they can, a vendor. You know. They'll go through something else. I mean, GPT chat is starting up now. And <laughs> as amazing it is, as it is, it's open source. Anybody can do anything. You know, there's there's a lot of and, you know, hybrid working did not help the situation. If you thought about it before, you were all in an office in a fort. Nothing could get in. We just had to lock that fort, and make it secure. Now you got people all over the world working from all over the place, working from their homes. Their kids are grabbing their computers. They're like, you know, kids are watching a movie. Their spouses are watching something. Their friends are coming in. They've got people in and out on their Wi-Fi. It's 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 just a whole different world, and we've got to be very conscious about how do we keep that safe. What do we need to do? Yeah. What are some of the most important cybersecurity changes companies need to be aware of today? What actions do they need to take? Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. And unfortunately, whenever I answer this question, everyone's like, oh, every time she says something, it makes it harder on us. You know, one of the biggest things is we need more controls in place. So there are things like zero threat security, right? Zero day security. So if you're accountant is the only person that really needs QuickBooks, right? They're the only person that needs the accounting system. Joe Schmo over in operations doesn't ever need to need it. We right now don't lock things down. We need more controls in place where if you try to access something that you don't normally access, you shouldn't be able to get in. But on the flip side of that, that means that your IT person needs to be constantly vigilant and say, Chris just tried to access that. Chris right? oh, because so-and-so said I needed it. I just need it for the day. Chris, no problem. We got it verified. Boom, we'll give you access, right? We're in a time where everything is instant for us. We need everything right now, right here at our fingertips. And when we do that, and we do that, by the way, multitasking. So when we're doing that and we're multitasking, we're causing concerns because we don't have everything locked down. So zero-day threats is one of them. Um, another thing is making sure you're never logging into a public Wi-Fi. 
There should be no reason to do that. You should not be going to Starbucks, logging into their Wi-Fi and working, right? Anyone can get into that. And they're not as secure as they need it. Your home should have multiple Wi-Fi channels. So in my own home, uh, my kids have a totally different Wi-Fi. Help has a totally different Wi-Fi. My guests have a totally different Wi-Fi. So no one's logging into a Wi-Fi where my system could be attacked. Mm. Um, you should have segregated Wi-Fis. Uh, another good one, VPN. You should never be logging in directly to work. Unless you have a system like mine, I have a, a enterprise-grade network at home because of you know, the fact that we run a cybersecurity company, you should always be VPNing. Then you don't have to worry about what's on your local computer and somebody, you know, somebody getting a hold of something. Those mm. are just a couple. Yeah. Um, what about segregated like uh laptops and desktops for specific functions, like not like not commingling, like, you know, one is like your data, another is like your apps, you know, another is like, you know, your yeah. banking. I think that's really hard to do in this diamond age because let's all be honest, most of us use a phone. We're doing everything off the phone, unless you're carrying five phones with you. But the way to get around that, the way to do that correctly is like I said, the Wi-Fi and making sure even through your phone, you're, you know, if you're going into a work environment, you have mobile device management on your phones. You're not doing anything from a, a general capacity. You're not sharing passwords. But if you start having segregated devices for everything, I definitely think that most people are just not going to do it. We have to be realistic. We also live in a world where everything does need to get done very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because um, I have a lot of uh, colleagues in blockchain and, you know, like they do everything because yeah. those, you know, those are really high prone to hack. So they, they do everything for with that just on one thing and they do what you did, like segregated Wi-Fi, like never like the VPN, everything. You know everything is passcode. <laughs> it's like yep. um, dual yeah. dual passcodes, multi-factor authentication. There should not be a single soul that doesn't have multi-factor authentication. Oh. There should be zero reason. Yeah, you need that. And um, and now like people can like hijack your hi iPhone through the SIM card, and it's like it's really sophisticated what what people are doing to like you know get in. <laughs> here's, here's well, here's the deal, right? We don't look at it this way, but. Um, you know, we were we were actually just named the number one cybersecurity uh, company in New Jersey, and we went through and we explained to people why we're you know we're so good at what we do because we're constantly learning and evolving, right? But here's the problem: the bad actors, this is a job for them, and they will make more money than all of us combined, ever. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is a job; they're constantly learning, they're constantly in the forefront. We're always playing catch up. I mm -hmm. mean, this is a true absolute enterprise that they are running here and it's very well run yeah um yeah that's interesting so you know so we we'll transition because you know cybersecurity that's really big um and it's something you companies need to be aware of and talk about for example going you know onto the entrepreneur route you know succeeding as a, a female in a male dominated industry uh advice for young entrepreneurs give us the give us your take wow that's like a lot of stuff <laughs> so I've always been in male dominated industries when I was on the trading floor, when I was in the entertainment industry, it's nothing new for me. I think the biggest thing, you know, if we're going to go that route first is for women to understand the more we, the more we point out how it is a male dominated industry, the more people realize how it's male dominated, right? When you walk into a first grade classroom and you go to the girls, Oh my God, girls, it's so good that you're, you're playing with science and math. They didn't realize it was different. They shouldn't have been playing with science and math, right? So it's pointing that stuff out that I think is causing some of the slowness for that. Um, here's what I have to say. In any of the male-dominant industry stuff, as a woman, there are definitely behaviors that women have that if men had them, they would be labeled differently. So you have <laughs> one, one of two options. You can either change your behavior or you can say, whatever, I don't care what you, what you have to say. I'm going to go about my way, which is what I did. You know, there are people that are always going to be on your side. And there are people that are going to be against you. And by the way, everybody has this. Every person in this world has people on their side and people against them. So you just have to kind of decide what route you want to take. In terms of entrepreneurs, so my husband passed away in 2019 unexpectedly. And one of the best things I think I'd ever done was join the company because had I not, I would not have been able to run the company the way I did. I fully took over. My husband was the IT genius behind the company and I just sort of managed the company. And what I would say to entrepreneurs is this, you got to take risks. Number one, because if you're not going to take a risk, 
it's going to be almost impossible to go forward. If you're staying still, that means you're moving backwards. If you're not doing something every single day to move yourself forward, you're 1000% moving backwards because there is no still because everybody else is moving up. And don't wait for things to be perfect, right? I mean, we all have this, this need for perfection constantly where we're sitting there saying, well, I can't release this or I can't do this until it's 100% perfect. It is not going to be 100% perfect, but do the best you can get it out there. Look at where you land and then take the next step. Look at where you land and discern, determine the next step. And if we don't do it that way, you'll never do anything. You'll never actually make an impact. You know, um, everybody talks about passion and purpose. Uh, you know, for me, the biggest thing is gratitude. And so it's, do I love what I'm doing? Absolutely. Um, I do love what I'm doing, but more so than loving what I'm doing, I love the people that I'm with. And the people I do it with, I love the relationships, the network I've created for myself. I have an incredible, incredible circle of friends and network. And I think gratitude for that is what helps me be better in everything else that I do. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Uh, yeah. Those are, you know, that's timeless. And yeah, I mean, it's similar to, you know, marginalized communities, um, you know, um, the underdog. Talk about, you know, shattering the glass ceiling for yourself, you know, for women, for underrepresented minorities, you know, tell us how to shatter that glass ceiling. I, if there was uh if there was a formula to that, um, I think, I think people could be charging a lot of money. <laughs> I think it's different for every person. I've always, you know, I was, I was, uh, I just got back from Africa. Yes. I'm part of an organization called entrepreneurs organization. We're the largest entrepreneurial organization in the world. So there are 18,000 of us globally. And I'm sitting in the lounge, uh, yesterday at some airport. It was a really long flight, 18 hours or something. And I remember I was drinking a cold coffee or something. And one of the guys goes to me, goes, where'd you get that? How'd you get that? I'm like, I asked for it. <laughs> oh, solid, stra solid strategy is what he said. <laughs> Ask for it. Ask questions. You know, when I worked in the banking industry, I was on this panel and it was a panel for uh, lean in. And there are all these women that had come into me and they'd said, I'm, I'm on the trading floor. I'm in the banking industry. And these guys go out all the time and they don't invite us and they don't do these things. And there was a woman that was on the panel with me. She was in HR and she goes, be yourself. Just don't do it. Try something else. And I go, well, that's not how you're going to make it. I go, let me ask you a question. I go, did you ask them? Did you say, hey, Chris, last night I heard you guys went out and you had an amazing time. Next time you go out, let me know. I'm in, right? I ask, ask the question. Ask Whatever it is, if we don't ask, you're not going to get it. And so if you want to break the glass ceiling, ask. Ask mm -hmm. how to get ahead. Ask how you can do better. Ask what makes you worse. Ask how you can improve. Ask for the negatives. Ask for the positives. Keep asking until you figure out what you need to do to shatter that ceiling. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And that's a wonderful way to end the conversation. Really just, you know, the uh, one thing I love about being an outsider is you just start start your own and just don't don't play by their rules you, you create your own exactly. rules and um just create exactly. your own success so then then there is no glass ceiling right so exactly uh, <laughs> exactly um I agree. it's uh yeah you know, how can people contact you follow you on social media reach out to you check out your company website etc sure so my company website is techworks.com t-e-c-h-w-e-r-x-e.com and I'm Sage Olakani, but I also have a website, Sage Olakani. Please reach out. You can find me on social media, on LinkedIn, on Instagram. I'm, I'm pretty much everywhere. If you hit up my website, sageolakani.com, you'll find all my information. And for all the listeners out there, let's thank Sage for coming onto the show. Really fantastic conversation about cybersecurity and just the talking about just making it as an entrepreneur, uh, you know, as and um, all of Sage resources will be in the links and show notes all her social media handles and with that thanks so much for coming on to the show chris thank you so much for having me it was absolutely my pleasure i hope you really enjoyed that wonderful inspirational motivational piece again if you wherever you are listening if you liked it be sure to like comment share subscribe we're on everywhere spotify itunes google amazon audible and without much ado be sure to thank this show's sponsors and
and we'll see you next week.